Utopia. Utopia is what many of us sci-fi fans, especially classic sci-fi fans, that's why we're in the game. This whole idea of uh, a future where mankind gets their their SHIT Earl Grey hot together and they they take care of each other and there's no money. Uh, uh, everyone has a place to live. Everyone has a purpose. Uh, like in the Orville, they, they don't have money. They don't have currency. Their currency is their accomplishments. Uh, but even that in itself has problems in my mind. But it is something that gives us all hope. But my question is to you guys, is that hope even possible? Is a utopian future, knowing what you know about the last 50,000 years of mankind, is that something that we can achieve in just a couple hundred more years? And that's what we're going to be talking about together. Uh, we're going to decide it together. Is utopia, a utopian future possible? Well, it's up to us. We're going to decide. We're going to let everybody know if it's something that we should be achieve, uh, trying to achieve or have the capability to achieve. I think we should always try try to achieve it uh, but is it something that we're going to be able to do and i want to know what you guys think and we're going to talk about it because i don't know i have my opinions but opinions aren't facts right now just so you know with this the the podcast here it's not just a podcast it's something we do live it's something that's available uh in all of your podcast grocers freezers uh it's the links down below you can click there you can find me on itunes spotify uh google i think is in the works if it hasn't already popped up now and everywhere else there are podcasts you will find uh good morning the orville dot 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 and it's for people that are 25th century minded who want to just know a little bit about the behind the scenes of uh of, of making a show but also who just want to talk about the ideas and the universes that are created for us uh to to give us hope and give us adventures and give us pew pews and explosions <laughs> justin wilson i love the idea of utopia but i don't think human nature is truly compatible much like the matrix if everything is too perfect the brain struggles to accept it yeah utopia should never be too perfect uh, people are still going to be people, which is a great idea that the Orville brings forth. Uh, their their original tagline for the Orville when they first came out in 2017 was 400 years in the future, but people are still people. And I think that will always be the case. And, and people have always been people. I think the last time we had a utopia on this planet of human beings was probably a long time ago before currency or be, even before trade uh, came about, back when we were in small little batches of you know small communities, a few dozen, maybe a hundred people, and everybody pulled their weight, everybody contributed, uh, uh, and everybody was was part of this thing, and they took care of each other. Uh, but they had to sleep on the ground, and there was you know, saber-toothed tigers and, and whatever, eating them up, taking them in the night. A saber-toothed tiger took my baby! Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it had its problems as well. Also, where do you poop? Where do you jalojo when you live in a community like that? Somebody's gonna, you know, walk around all of a sudden step in Stanley's, uh, uh, Puloja. That doesn't sound fun either. Uh, the utopias existed before toilets, you guys. Rico says, Utopia is impossible. That would be the bailed out bankster's paradise uh, we live in. Yes, we are. I would agree. Uh, think about it. Think think about the society that we've created. Um, I'm not saying this is good or bad. I'm just saying, hey, let's think about it. Uh, you have to have a job, right? You got to have a job. In order to have a job, places are going to want you to have a place to live, a roof over your head. That roof costs money. Everything about that that roof costs money. The the water, the the electricity. Nowadays, you have to have the internet. You have just got to. You got to have a, a cell phone. A home phone is just isn't going to work in today's society. But in order to get that job that you need to to pay rent with, you already have to be paying rent to get that job. You have to wake up. You have to take a shower because uh, most jobs want you to 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 smell nice and be clean. That water in that shower costs money you got to drive to work in most cases traveling to work costs money you got to pay for that car you got to pay for that 
a subway ticket. You got to pay for gas. And we all know what's going on with gas right now. Uh, you got to have something to eat because work in most cases, except, except for when it's Rebecca's birthday, is not going to be providing you with free burritos. You got to have lunch. Either you got to buy lunch, which is what most people do because they spend so much time having to get ready for work. Uh, uh, or you got to bring a lunch, but that's a whole extra uh, uh, thing you have to do to spend your time on. It. And you're already spending an hour or at least half an hour uh, getting ready for work and that's time that you are not getting paid for how much time does it take you to get to work uh, all these things uh, you know we just got to pay money pay money pay money pay money and that's what society's become and that is not a utopian society or a society that's on their way to living within a utopian society that's pay money in order to make money so that you can keep paying some of that money uh, to make money to keep you going to make more money money by the way that has been taxed upon we're getting we're getting hardcore with with this one i guess my brain's my brain's just running you make money that gets taxed before you get it and then it gets taxed again by whatever state you live in you get double taxed and then that double tax money you go buy something and what do they do they tax you uh, just for the 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 privilege of using that money to purchase something, so you're getting taxed three times. This is not a utopian uh, uh, society uh, in my mind, or is it one that is on its way? Utopia. Think about it. What's the what created Star Trek? And uh, I assume the Orville as well. What created that utopia? The discovery of endless renewable power. Once power became free and plentiful, money was not needed anymore. Everybody got has power to, to, to charge your cell phone, to make the car work, all that stuff. Uh, there's a problem with that. Let me ask you this question. If renewable power all of a sudden showed up tomorrow, where we got endless power, it doesn't cost anything to make, uh, you know they're going to charge you for it. Do you think they would give anybody that free power for free? No, whoever makes the free power will be charging for that free power. So even that, the thing that started Utopia in, in these sci-fi universes, I don't feel is a, is a thing that's going to ever happen. There's going to be whoever has the thing to give away, they're going to charge for that thing, in my opinion. You guys might think differently, though. John Plange, we need to figure out a way to get rid of the concept of money. Uh, heads in, guys, we can do this. I think tokens would be good. We get rid of money and we just have tokens <laughs> that we trade for things, <laughs> which then those tokens become money. But what about Disney dollars? Uh, Disney dollars might be pretty good, but that, then it just becomes money. Uh, you have to figure out a way for everybody be, to be provided for, but that has its own uh, uh, bad things about it. M many people will be provided for and they're like, yeah, let's contribute. We're getting free stuff and I got nothing to do with my life. Uh, let's make uh, uh, giving back and working hard, uh, you know, part of this whole th system that we got. Well, that's going to be great for a lot of people, but there will always be people uh, that are like, oh, I'm getting free stuff. I'm just going to party all day, all night. Uh, I'm guessing there has to be people like that in a utopian society, in Star Trek universe, in the Orville universe. There's probably people living in an apartment uh, uh, in New York and everything's free and they just party all the time. That's always going to be a part of it. But also we have to decide, do we care? I'm being provided for and I don't have to, 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 to provide anything back. I just choose to do so. Uh, do I care that someone else does not choose to do so? My needs are all taken care of. Uh, there's a lot of problems. And uh, if you break it all down, a lot of those problems are humans. <laughs> humans are the problem. Our needs, our wants, our, our selfish, you know, we're selfish. You know, uh, not all of us are selfish, but at some point we were probably selfish. I was very selfish uh, much of my life. And then, you know, you learn, you grow older, you become less selfish. For me, it was, uh, you know, I've always been nice, but, I, you know, but my needs were always, at least in my mind, a little bit more important than, than other people. And then I met Jessica and, and, and I have a family. I have a, I have a stepkid now. 
and my just naturally my priorities and the way I think about my own needs changed and I'm happy about that uh you know I don't go out shopping and like hmm I want this I want that I'm like how you know what does my family want what is what would what would make them feel provided for and that is the first thing that comes to my mind now and uh but that's just me everybody's different and everybody has the right to be different in my opinion because i know you guys and you guys know me and we've been learning about each other for years now many of us and i'm like these are smart people these are people that don't always uh have to talk about pew pews and explosions as much as we like them there's ideas and the sci-fi that we love the sci-fi that's brought us together is full of ideas uh not yes or no answers to these questions but uh uh exploration of these questions uh things to talk about to figure things out together uh not by just saying here's the answer no uh the orville they never said here's the answer even when about a girl um we were all saying, you know, all of us viewers were like, no, let Topa remain the way that she was born. But that's not what happened uh, because they presented both sides of the argument from both species and they both had good arguments. Uh, of course, we know what we side with, but it didn't give us the right answer. It just gave us the question for us to answer for ourselves. And that's what great sci-fi does. And that's what the Orville does.